Hey guys, it's Joshua Duct Tape Channel, and several months ago I made a video named The Worst Diesel Engine Ever Made, and of course I was talking about the Detroit Diesel 8.2 Fuel Pincher, which from what research I could find is one of the worst designed diesel engines ever made. Now, GM was mainly the one pushing that, and I got a lot of comments after that saying another GM product, another diesel engine, was perhaps worse but not only worse had a much bigger negative impact on the diesel market in north america than any other diesel has ever had in history and if you don't know what engine i'm talking about we need to go back to the mid 1970s the mid 1970s the muscle car era was over cars were huge cars were hideous they got bad fuel economy the oil embargo had raised fuel costs through the roof. So Oldsmobile decided that, hey, we got gas prices through the roof, but we got this other green handle over here. We got a diesel handle, and they can last longer and get better fuel economy, so why don't we make a diesel engine? Seems like a great idea at the time. So let's talk about the Oldsmobile 4.3 and 350 diesel engines. Now, if you're a younger guy or gal, you might be saying, what the heck is Oldsmobile? Well, Oldsmobile was a subsidiary at the time in 2004 and in the 1970s when we were discussing this engine, but 2004, they went out of business. At least that portion of General Motors closed down, and they, at the time of their closing, was one of the oldest auto manufacturers in the world. They'd started producing in 1897, and eventually they got under General Motors, which of course owns Chevrolet, Pontiac, Buick, Oldsmobile, as well as some others. Now, of course, Pontiac also went out of business, but unrelated to Oldsmobile. Now, Oldsmobile, and we said we're talking about the Oldsmobile 350 and the 4.3 liter here. These are not the same 350 and the same 4.3 liter you may be familiar with. The Chevy 350 and 4.3, which is basically a six-cylinder version of the 350, are way more widely used. They've been produced for a lot longer, and they're different engines completely. The blocks, the cylinder head, it's still a V8, but very different. Really no interchangeable parts that I know of. So we're referring to the Oldsmobile one here. So they thought, why don't we make this more fuel-efficient longer less than diesel engine, and we'll put it in our cars, all 21 different models. Now, why would one subsidiary of a large car manufacturer make 21 models of just cars? I have no idea, folks. I'm not a car salesman or a car engineer. Now, if you were designed to design a diesel engine, generally what you're gonna do is make a very robust block, cylinder head, camshaft, Everything needs to be stronger than a gasoline engine in general because you're dealing with much higher compression ratios. You have a lot more cylinder pressure. There's just a lot more going on with a diesel engine as far as the robustness it needs to be made with than a gasoline engine. So probably what you wouldn't want to do is just take your normal V8 and just turn it into a diesel engine. That'd be a really bad idea. But that is pretty much exactly what they did. They took their gasoline engine, which generally would run, let's say, 8 to 10 to 1 compression ratio, and they bumped that up into the low 20s, up to 22 to 1 compression ratio. Now, most diesel engines don't even have a compression ratio that high. Most of the cat diesel engines in large trucks are 16 to 18 to 1 compression ratio. This is 22 to 1 compression ratio, folks. And they kept the same basic engine design. The same head bolt pattern, the same head gasket. What the heck kind of idea was that? And that's where a lot of their problems started. Head gasket failures. They had head gasket failures almost right out of the gate on so many of their engines. Not only that, they had a lot of camshaft problems at this time, which not necessarily being a diesel engine makes it worse on camshafts, but if you've got an engine that already has a fairly expensive repair, being the camshaft and head gasket going out all the time, that is not a great recipe for longevity or your reputation. Now, how unreliable were these? Is this just a myth that they were that unreliable? Well, for example, CARB, C-A-R-B, which is the California 
Air Resources Board, 1979, tried to certify this diesel engine for their use in their roads. Guess what happened? They were supplied nine vehicles to test. All nine of them failed. Not only that, they were using the TH200 transmission. Seven of the nine had transmission problems also at the same time. Not looking too good for Oldsmobile, folks. So how long was the run on these engines? Well, they were made from 1978 to 1985. The 4.3 liter, which was the smaller version, came out a few years later from the 350, and most of the bugs had been worked out by that time. However, the early years were so bad with the 350s that basically it burned their customers. Bad reputation. Even though they sold hundreds of thousands of these engines, they had so many failures and such a bad reputation that people just lost interest. Not only that, why would you go with a diesel engine if it's having so many more problems when there's a much more reliable gasoline engine that most people are more familiar with at the time? Now, this was pretty much, unless you get into Volkswagen, the only real diesel engine that was widely sold that I could find. Now, were there were some other ones out there? Yes, but this was by far the most highly selling one of the time. And its failure basically wiped out the diesel fuel market in the United States. Now, like I said, there was Volkswagen and some other engines out there, but they're pretty much done. It never really recovered to the same point that Oldsmobile and GM was selling diesel car engines. Now, of course, trucks are a much different story, but what we're talking about here is the car engine. And of course, now I don't believe there will ever be another diesel car made for the US market for two reasons. There's a very heavy push for electric, of course, away from internal combustion engines, but also the emission standards now are so insanely tight on diesel engines with the requirement of DPFs, DEF, SCR systems that it would basically price them out of the market even if someone wanted a diesel engine. So were they really that bad, Josh? Well, you know what? I've never worked on one. I'm only going off the research I could do and the comments which are hilarious. So here's a comment from Ice Axe Hikes. My late father had an Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme with the 5.7 diesel. It was a great car but immediately blew a head gasket. He put a new head gasket in it. Then it collapsed the lifter. New lifters, head gasket goes again. He fixed it, finally got that engine running great. 25 miles per gallon, amazing. So he drives it to work to show all his buddies, and as he pulls up, another lifter lets go. I was a kid, but remember helping him pull a used 305 gas engine at the wrecking yard, swapping that 5.7 diesel for the gasoline 305. It was a great car after that, and when I turned 16, I took my driver's test in that car. Along came California smog testing, but the Olds was still registered as a diesel. So dad's cutlass was exempt, quote unquote, from Cali smog testing. My dad got a personalized license plate saying no mo diesel. He was something else. But from what just their impact on history was, yes. Very poorly marketed engine that really soured the reputation of the diesel car which is sad because a diesel engine for a commuter vehicle would be very good. It can be very long lasting, get very good fuel economy, but if not produced in the correct way, you get something like this, which we're talking about 40 years later, folks. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.